Earlier this year, we took a look at the first two releases in Transformers Legacy Evolution's effort to update the figures from Transformers Armada, a point in the franchise I have a particular soft spot for because the whole of the Unicron trilogy is what I mark as my on-ramp into Transformers. And with it being a few months later now, a few more figure releases having happened, and Transformers Legacy United being right around the corner, I figure, what the heck, let's kick off the penultimate month of the year by taking a look at the final free Transformers Legacy Evolution Armada Universe Denizens. <laughs> things off today, we have what's tied for my favorite announcement out of San Diego Comic-Con this year with the G.I. Joe Classified series Vamp, that being finally the return of Minicons. The one thing everybody said in response to the Legacy Armada figures was, where are the Minicons? And at Hasbro's yearly SDCC breakfast event, they said, here is a Minicon packed in with a repaint of Hotshot and some blast effects for $40. Which, I'll admit, I was somewhat torn on initially, and now that I've got it in hand, I'm still somewhat torn on it. Because for starters, while I was one of the few people who really went to bat for this Hotshot, even I wasn't super thrilled at the prospect of having to buy it again just to get Jolt. As I said in the original Legacy Armada review, I don't see why the Minicons can't just be their own separate core class releases if they're too expensive to put in with the main figures without sacrificing significant parts of the budget. And... <sighs> Honestly, this really just feels like a way of getting more use out of the mold. I mean, I just don't know anybody who prefers the Power Links colors over the original color schemes for the Armada characters. Hotshots are kind of cool in that, in this mode at least, they directly acknowledge that he's a bit of a fusion of Hot Rod and Bumblebee. But in robot mode, I don't know, they just come off kind of gaudy to me. Maybe it's the gold, maybe it's the hard contrast of the blacks and the yellows, but just doesn't work for me, especially with how much black there is. It feels like it's really eating up the sculpt. Oh well, at least there's a nice new head sculpt to enjoy. And yeah, he does come with two new guns as well, but honestly, these don't really say Hotshot to me. I have no idea what they're based on. Maybe the Dreamwave comics or something? I don't know, they feel really G2 comic, and not at all this guy's vibe, so I kind of just, you know, tuck him over here. Now let's talk about the real star of the show here, because I think we can all agree Jolt was a hotly anticipated figure as soon as Hotshot was announced, and they did a decent job here. I like that they chose to go for the animation colors over the original toy, even though that deep lobster red is forever embedded in my head because Hotshot and Jolt were one of the few Armada figures I actually had as a kid. But these colors still work, and the stubby, more animation-accurate appearance really helps sell them. Gotta love that rotor blade, too. There's just something about spinning it that makes you want to turn into a five-year-old and start making helicopter noises. And yeah, he can still do the iconic hovering attack car mode, but... I don't know, without the springs and whatnot, it just feels a tad underwhelming. But other than that, there's pretty much all there is to this mode. The engine gun can't attach to it like it could with the old one, and all it's really good for is the power linksing. So let's go ahead and check out how this guy looks as a little robot. <laughs> Transformation on this guy is shockingly simple and similar to the original. There's basically nothing changed except for a couple little added in steps here to accommodate for the new heel spurs, which are a nice touch, but I gotta admit there's something about it that just leaves me wanting for more. Robot mode, though, is 
absolutely lovely. I mean, helicopter transformers are so rare in the first place, but it's even rarer they nail a properly elegant transformer robot mode with just a little bit of doofy Star Wars droid charm that this guy has. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Blackout, Tomahawk, Evac, and other assorted G1 characters I can't be bothered to mention right now, but there's just something so charming about making the rotors a backpack doing the seeker chest thing with the tail fin and turning the cockpit into shoes. It's just perfect. Shame I can't say the same about the articulation though, because there's almost no additional stuff added on from the new figure aside from some hinges at the elbows which were just tube pieces on the original. And I mean, that is a nice touch, but... <sighs> I really wanted to see a huge improvement with these given that they're such modern toys and the fact that we couldn't get a waist joint or a neck joint really bothers me. Would it have been so hard to have mushroom pegged this thing on? The fact that his head doesn't turn at all really kills a lot of the poses I like to do with my Transformers. As is, he kind of just chills out there with the engine gun in his hand. But as reimaginings go in these lines it's not the worst i've ever seen and it is a good first effort now just get to swindle already without making me pay for a freaking thundercracker repaint that is probably actually coming isn't it now getting on to a figure that has extremely big shoes to fill because the original armada megatron was my childhood Megatron, and I played with that thing until it basically came apart and actually bought a brand new one later in life to replace it, only to have to resell that because of computer issues last year. But nevertheless, I was very excited to get a hold of a new one because one of the few problems I always had with that toy as a kid was his legs didn't have much articulation, and Legacy is all about articulation. It's just a shame that even at a $60 liter price point, adding in articulation to these designs seems to come at a cost of basically any of the fun play features of the originals, which is really weird because I remember being super happy that they kept in Hot Shots Axel Zuka, but here... All of the little minicon traps and flip-out ports from the original are relegated to little sculpting nods that are kind of picked out with paint. And even the tank turret itself, well, it can do the old up and down, and it can move a bit. When you move it too far, it hits an articulation detent that is for specific key animation poses. You can't get a full 360 with this thing unless you take it apart and shave down certain pegs. And that's really annoying. I kind of feel like no matter what animation calls for, being able to hit a full 360 with a tank turret is something that every tank toy should have, regardless of whether that's something the tank in question can actually do in real life. It's just something that your kid brain is always going to want to do with a toy. Add that to the fact that the old Minicon activated missile launcher does still flip forward, but only far enough to do his attack mode and robot mode, not far enough to actually be effective in this mode, and comes off for some reason, just makes this tank mode a bit of a disappointment, which is really irritating, because as somebody who grew up with it, I've always taken up for this thing. I like age tanks. I like the bizarre pincers in the center of this thing. I like how aggro it looks, and the meaty deep green military color that's going on here it just screams badass futurism to me but it's not as playable as the original so i have a hard time defending it here oh well we all know the alt mode is really not the selling point with this thing so Let's see if the robot mode can actually salvage my negative opinions on it so far. <laughs> The 
transformation ends up being a bit of a clumsy feeling update on the original, honestly. I mean, I understand the decision to modernize by removing all the slidey joints and replacing them with simple flipping hideaways, but the weird added midsection bits just feel wholly unnecessary and it's all kind of clumsy to get it all feeling right because of all the added articulation actually that's a big problem i have with this guy despite really liking how they sort of subtly updated the design to make it a fusion of the toys details the animation model smoothness and the weird handsomeness of the video game model it just kind of feels a little floppy a lot of these joints don't actually lock in anywhere and what's worse when you go to articulate these arms they don't actually articulate at the shoulder pauldron like the original toy they just articulate at the shoulder which leaves the shoulder pauldrons feeling kind of awkward and the arms looking a little dinky almost t -X, x and <sighs> I just, I don't care for it. Like, as much as I love that he can finally kick and he's got ankle joints and all that, I don't feel like it's worth having to deal with these things constantly flopping about and the fact that the horns constantly fall off. Whenever I so much as start manipulating his head, I can already feel them wiggling out of these very loose pegs that they're in. I even accidentally knocked one off while transforming it. And yeah, the ones on the original were removable, but they had a really nice snap peg in, so it wasn't possible to really accidentally do it, and it wasn't as much of a pain to get them back in as you just saw me having there. There's something very wrong feeling about this guy because he's lacking a lot of the solid chunk of the original and i think that's pretty unfortunate along with the fact that again none of the gimmicks of the old toy are really accessible here the closest you get is a sculptural homage in him having a different looking hand on each one because this hand was completely differently designed on the original toy thanks to a fold-out knife that was one of my favorite features of the original toy but isn't present here again i really wish they had like made that into some kind of actual weapon like give him a little combat knight or something so that he has something to hold in this mode as is he just kind of stands there you can of course swivel the tank turret forward as he often did in the show and as i almost always had my original one doing but it's no firing missile here best you got is stick on one of the blast effects that came with hotshot or that you've got lying around from some other uh post-war for cybertron toy and even then it's just kind of not the same man also the end of the tank turret is on an extremely loose peg connection like the ears because they advertise on the back of the box that if you want you can make him have a handgun because that's a thing armada megatron was really known for being able to do and not at all just a way of getting around certain design elements and putting an action feature call out on the box even though the original toy had plenty of very viable action features you could have put into this for sixty dollars i know it probably comes off like i'm being extremely harsh here there's probably people going oh but they got the original attack mode in but again there's not much you can do with the original attack mode. The appeal of the old toy was that you would spin this around really fast and it would set off a ton of sound effects from the turret and you could also launch all the missiles in the same direction at the same time. But there's no missiles, there's no sound effects. This is really just a display option and for somebody who actually likes to play with his toys, not just display, it comes off as deeply underwhelming. Man, this video has just not been going well. Each figure so far has let me down in little ways here and there that's led to me sounding like the kind of cranky reviewer I'm usually not a fan of. You know the type, those guys who just can't acknowledge that anything that comes out now is good because they're so attached to the pure idea of everything that happened when they were a kid being inherently great and special because, shut up, I was young and I was too young to criticize anything. 
Well, it's a good job that the uh, last item we have to look at today completely disproves that notion for me. Yes, that's right, folks. It is finally time to talk about the Transformers Generations Legacy Evolution Armada Universe Commander Class Optimus Prime. <sighs> Months and months after it leaked and I practically splooged myself because this is a figure that I honestly never expected to happen, but I am so glad did because to make a long story short, I always wanted the original as a kid because the Cybertron reissue of Bendy Prime was my childhood Optimus Prime and I was always very confused about why it didn't come with the trailer and if I could get the trailer separately because I wanted to do the cool super mode from that cartoon I had a couple DVDs of that this Optimus happened to resemble and I only discovered about partway through my teenage years that that original toy was actually kind of crap because the trailer entirely relied on an auto transforming gimmick that led to the legs of the super mode essentially being glorified panels. And here they have completely stripped out that auto transforming gimmick in order to give the legs actual articulation and it has really worked in the toy's favor. We'll talk about it a little more once we get to the actual super mode, but right now I gotta say I absolutely love this alt mode. I have always been a big fan of Armada's take on the G1 Optimus alt mode, turning the trailer into this roided out mass of badassitude, complete with the cannon just sitting loud and proud on top of a couple hidden away missile launchers out the back. And that's without even mentioning that this is the first time in a big Media Blitz relaunch that they went for a long nose Optimus Prime over a short nose. And yeah, Laser Optimus Prime did exist years before this guy, but that didn't have as much of a presence as this one did. And it's kind of astounding that it was there and so good looking so long before the Bayverse boy came along and made so many man babies lose their collective shit in anger. I just love this thing, man. The only real critiques I could have are purely aesthetic, because yeah, they didn't totally hide away the super mode hands, but they're definitely way less obvious than they were on the original, and it's, it's clearly just a personal thing, but I've never cared for this silver go faster stripe. It just really screams of somebody walking by the designer's desk in the last week of the production cycle and going, that needs an extra deco hit, and the designer just taking a paintbrush and going, good enough. Other than that, though, spot on Bravo recreation of the original design, which I think stands the test for the time. It's as rugged and proud looking as the original, just in a different way that I find a little more enjoyable because I have a personal nostalgia attachment to it. All right, enough truck talk. Let's see how they updated the robot mode of this guy. <laughs> Transformation on this guy is interesting because it's an equally simple update to the original as Megatron, but it never feels quite as floppy or haphazard as that guy. It's got a real solidity to it where everything just kind of flows together nicely, and there's very little you can mistakenly do, and all in all, it results in a pretty great robot mode. I've always dug this window peckless update to Optimus that throws the center much more on the truck's grill and gives him a very stocky, almost Wolverine-esque look, especially with 
the um, smokestack guns that uh, can't make a pistol in this version. One of the very few complaints I have is that they took that out for some reason. It would have been really nice to have him dual wielding the big super gun as well as the smokestack pistol, but you can't have it all. You can at least have, though, a nice little Armada style matrix, which looks great and can come out, but like, I don't have any guys who can really hold it beyond just placing it on top of their hand, so it's going to stay in there forever. Posing's pretty decent with this guy, too. He only really lacks a waist joint due to the other transformation, so he can hit just about anything you need him to and get pretty stable with it on just about any flat surface. The only real problem is just the real-world issue of these bulky shoulders kind of blocking his line of sight at times if you're really obsessed over that kind of minor stuff like I am. And while we're on the head, I do like the updated sculpt, but something about the eyes on this one just feel a little too sunken in, a little too sad looking from certain angles. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like they could have livened him up a tad more than they did. And then there's the base mode, which exists. I mean, it's really not the focus here, unlike with the original toy where this was meant to be a huge playset for all the other Minicons in the line, complete with a center tower that they completely got rid of here. And honestly, I'm not too bothered by it because I'm probably never going to display the trailer like this. It would have been nice, though, if we could have maybe thrown in one or two little flip-out turrets here for Minicon toys that I do hope eventually come along to go with this guy. And that's pretty much your lot for the standard modes on this guy, but those modes aren't why you're buying this guy. No, no, no. You're buying this guy because, well, you got the extra cash and you just really want to feel super, don't you? <laughs> Transformation the Super Mode is just so fun, man. I absolutely love all the clicky, clacky, chunky joints that are in this guy to make it possible. It truly feels like a return of Armada-style engineering, but with more modern sensibilities to provide the articulation this guy really needs to shine, because I think everybody's always thought this is a pretty good design. It just lacked the articulation to really make it look good like it does in animation, and hey, look, you got ankles, you got knees, you got in, you got out, you got forward, you got back, and it is all beautifully ratcheted. It's even a freaking waist joint under all this skirt gunk, man, so you can totally get him throwing crazy amounts of shapes up in the house if you want to. About the only drawback to this version, I would say, is the shoulder pads, because I don't know if it's a build quality or an engineering or just a quality control thing with my copy, but they never want to hold together. As soon as I start moving the arms at all, they pop apart and it's a little annoying to have to constantly click them back together every time I pose him. 
Oh, well, at least it lets you expose the secret Minicon symbol detailing they added in, which is a very nice touch. And that head sculpt, man, just marvel at it. There's something so extremely 2000s anime craze cool about having pipes form the faceplate and big ridiculous golden ears to illustrate that this guy is way more powerful than he was before and he gonna shoot your ass. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. No toy is. He's certainly got a ridiculous cloaca hanging out back here that does get in the way of some poses, but it's a much better update than we've gotten to most other Unicron trilogy designs so far, and for that reason alone, it's one of my favorite toys I've gotten all year. Not my outright favorite, but definitely way up there, and for me, Despite the fact that it took so long to come out after the initial leaks and a lot of my hype died off after that point, having spent about a month with this guy now, I gotta say, he makes the entire Legacy Evolution Armada sub-effort worth it for me. Just a perfect update that completely negates any want I ever had to get the original, and... It's just nice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that about does it for me and Legacy Armada Toys, at least in the year of our Lord 2023. I don't know if I'm going to come back to talk about the core class Energon Megatron they showed or the tidal wave that they're clearly teasing off of that poster, but for now... I think we've closed the book, and we've had a good time, and until next time, this is The Vacuuminator reminding you that you never truly fail until you stop trying, which is why I didn't stop trying to throw money at this effort, because eventually it paid off quite well. So, until next time, I'm gonna go find a sandbox to play with this guy in. <laughs>